Right, so for today's uh, lesson, uh, we are going to learn how to apply differentiation to find out the stationary point or turning point. Okay, so uh, in the question, uh, when you see the word stationary point or turning point, generally it can be either a maximum or minimum point. Uh. Alright, so we look at this one. This is actually all the keyword, uh, stationary, turning point, maximum or minimum. So when you want to find all these points, generally the gradient of the curve is equal to zero. So you usually let dy dx equals to zero. All right, so as a very simple example, let's say I'm having a curve. Okay, maybe a parabola. All right, so let's say this is a minimum point, right? So at this minimum point, the gradient of tangent is equal to zero. It is parallel with the x-axis. All right, so that's actually why dy dx equals to zero always we are having the maximum minimum point or we call them as stationary or turning point all right okay so in our syllabus there are uh, two types of uh, stationary point that you need to know that is maximum and also minimum but actually we are having another type of stationary point that you need to know like, but they will not be asked in the exam okay we call them as point of inflection all right, so there are three types actually. We are having maximum, minimum, where you already learned it before, and also the point of inflection. Okay, so when we want to find out any maximum or minimum point from a graph or from the equation, generally there are a few steps that you need to follow. Okay, so here we list out the steps. First one, you find the differentiation or derivative. Okay, then after that, step number two, list the value of x. You need to find the value of x when dy dx equals to zero or f times x equals to zero all right then after you let all this value you found the value of x already taking each of this value of x determine the nature of stationary points because sometimes uh, the question will request whether you uh after you find out the point x right they actually want you to know whether that particular point is maximum point or minimum point because no matter maximum maximum or minimum point, it will be always dy dx equals to zero. All right. So if let's say you want to determine whether is it maximum or minimum, then you have to carry out another extra steps, a few extra steps. All right. Okay. So when you want to decide whether is it maximum or minimum, okay, there are two methods here. So generally, I believe that. All of us learned method number two before in the secondary school. All right, so they actually want you to find the gradient of the gradient function. That means they want you to find out the second derivative of y. Okay, then after that, you substitute x into the dy dx, right? You substitute x into the d2y dx squared the second derivative all right then after that you are looking at the value that you get like if let's say you get d2y dx two smaller than zero then it is actually a maximum point and then when you substitute it and you get greater than zero then it is a minimum point all right okay then um this is what we learned before so i hope that you still remember it okay but for a level syllabus especially when you go to a2 syllabus you will meet another case where d square y dx squared equals to zero so i believe that so far until now you haven't any question that give you this answer one equals to zero one the question usually set for you is either smaller than zero or greater than zero all right so for a2 level you will face a case like this huh? you will have the answer which is equals to zero one when you are having any value, uh, sorry, when you're having d square y dx square equals to zero, that means uh, the point can be the point of inflection. It can be maximum, it can be minimum. So in short, what does it mean? It means that it is it will not give you any conclusion. Alright, so this one will not give you any conclusion. That means you won't know whether is it point of inflection, maximum or minimum. All right. Therefore, we need a better method, okay, that can cater all the cases. Right? Understand what I say or not? All right. Okay. So 
in AS level exam, of course, you still, uh, you still can apply this one. But for me, I will strongly recommend that you learn up method number one for now. All right, because in A2 level, I'm not going to teach you the method one again. Huh? All right, method one will be very, very useful in A2 level, especially A2 level. Huh? All right, okay. So here you see, if let's say you cannot make any decision or conclusion, then you have to follow method number one. Okay, so method number two is something that you learned before. All right, so later I will just show you uh, roughly how to do it so that you recall back the method number two. Okay, then now we go to method number one. What is method number one actually? All right, so the method number one is actually we need to work out the sign of the gradient on other side of the stationary point. So for maximum point, you will get a gradient positive to negative. All right, so for a minimum point, you will get a gradient negative to positive. All right, so what does it mean? Okay, so again, I take a very simple explanation. Okay, let's say I'm having maximum point. Okay, so this is my maximum point, right? At this one, the gradient is equal to zero. Okay, so for this method now, generally we are looking for the sign of the gradient. If let's say I put in any value, okay, let's say this is x, ah. Okay, let's say I put in a value smaller than x and to find a dy dx. Huh? If this is positive, and if I put in a value which is after the x, and I get a value dy dx negative, then generally it means that you're having a maximum point. right? Because before the maximum point, gradient is positive. After the maximum point, gradient is negative. All right, so the same thing happens for minimum point. Okay, so if let's say I'm having a curve and I'm having a minimum point, so again at minimum point, the dy dx is equal to zero. All right, so if you look carefully, before the maximum, uh, sorry, before the minimum point, if you try to get the dy dx, it will be negative. All right, so if you try to get the dy dx after the minimum point, then you'll see that the dy dx is positive. So that means that when you're having dy dx from negative to positive, you will get a minimum point. So this is how we decide either maximum or minimum point by using method number one. Usually for me, I will draw it in a table form so that you can see it easier. But the concept actually comes from the graph. Alright, so later for the example uh, that we need to decide whether is it maximum or minimum, I will show you both methods. Uh. And then I, I actually strongly recommend you to learn out method number one. It will be super useful and very, very useful in, in A2 level. All right. In AS, you want to use it also can. It will be good. All right. Okay. All right. So this is how we actually decide either do we have either maximum point. We are having two methods here. Okay. Then after that, if let's say they want to calculate the maximum or minimum value, you substitute the x into the original equation to get the y, the value of y. So that particular value of y will be your maximum value or minimum value. Okay. All right, so generally this is the summary. Okay, when you're having a maximum, so again, this is to show you the method one that I discussed just now. All right, so at maximum point, dy dx is equal to zero. So before the maximum point, you see that the f prime x is positive. This one is positive. All right, then after the maximum point, f prime x is smaller than zero, which is negative. The same thing happened for the minimum point. Before the minimum point, f prime x is negative. After the minimum point, x prime x is positive. All right. Okay. Then we talk about the point of inflection just now, right? So what's the meaning of point of inflection? There are some cases now when you see, look at it, now you'll see that oh, uh, at a certain point between the curve, right? There's a point that will give you gradient equals to zero, but it is not a maximum. It is also not a minimum. It is something like a turning point to, how to say, about the concave upward curve or concave downward curve, something like that, which is not in our solutions. All right, so this is what we have for point of inflection, just to let you know about it. Okay, it will not be asked in our solutions. All right, okay. Okay, so let us have a look for all the examples that involve maximum and minimum point. Okay, we can have a look for example 11 first.
Okay, so for example, 11, um, a figure is given, right? And then what they want you to find out actually. Okay, so this diagram show you the curve. Okay, the graph for this curve. And then the curve has a minimum point on x axis. So if let's say you look at it clear, uh, carefully on the graph, this is a minimum point and it is on the x axis. Okay, so first they want you to find the value of k. Alright, so uh, again, for those who want to challenge yourself, right, you can actually pause the video first, attempt the example first, only you come back and have a look for the answer. Okay, right? Okay, so now how can we actually try to get the value of k? Mm, Alright, so first you know that this is your minimum point, right? Because in the question already, just now they already told you that like, this is actually your minimum point and it is actually on the x-axis. Okay, so maybe I want to use this information to try and see whether I can get a value of k or not. Right, so I'm having y equals to x power 3 minus 3x squared minus 9x plus k. Right, so first I want to find the dy dx. So when I find the dy dx, I'm having 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. Alright, and after that, at this particular point, I know that dy dx is equal to 0. Right, so when I let it equal to 0, I'm having x squared minus 2x minus 3. And when I try to factorize it, I'll have negative 3 x plus 1 equals to 0. And if I solve it, I'll have x equals to 3 and also x equals to negative 1. Alright, so can you tell me which point do you think that this minimum point belongs to? It, it is actually x equals to 3. Alright, so what's the meaning for x equals to negative 1? So at the same time, you should know uh, by looking at the graph, uh, x equals to negative 1 is actually this maximum point. Both are also stationary point, but I don't know which one is maximum, which one is minimum. Alright, but if let's say they provide you with the graph, uh, then you can see very clearly, this is x equals to negative 1. And you're having a ma maximum point here, then the minimum point here, this value will be x equals to 3. Okay, so once I know that this is x equals to 3, and then I also know at the same time, right, it is on the x axis, therefore y is equal to 0. Right, so when I substitute this information into my original equation, what do I have? I'm having 0 equals to 3 power 3 minus 3, 3 square minus 9, 3 plus k. So from here, you will see that you can get the value of k very easily, which is k should be equal to 27. Alright, so I think this part is not hard at all. But of course, you need to use the information given up by using this point. You should know that this point, if I know the x value, I will know the y value, which is on the x axis, it is equal to 0. Let's substitute that into the original equation to get the value of k. Alright, okay. Then now we continue to part number 2. Okay, so for part number 2, they want you to find the coordinates of the maximum point of the curve. So as what I mentioned just now, you already know that the x value for the maximum point is negative 1. Therefore, to get the y, you just substitute the x into the original equation. So you're having negative 1 power 3 minus 3 negative 1 square minus 9 negative 1 plus 27. So from here, you can get the value of y very easily, which is 32. Therefore, the coordinate of maximum point will be negative 1 and also the 2. They are asking for coordinate, right? So usually I will write it up in the coordinate form. Alright, okay. After that, we look at the third part. Okay, so for the third part, they ask you the set of values of x for which this curve has a dis decreasing function of x. Okay, so they just ask you to state now. Uh, that means there uh, are no extra steps needed. You just need to write out the answer. 
So how can you write the answer straight away? You can actually refer to the graph here. So um, when we learn decreasing and increasing function before, uh, see remember I used all to like factorize everything and so on, right? Okay, and then you decide the value of x okay, by drawing the number line. But if let's say like this example, they already give you the original graph. Okay, so I think you can see from the graph very clearly. Lah. All right. Okay, so you can see that for yellow color part here, this part of graph is increasing, going up, right? So it is increasing. And after that, in this part of graph, it is decreasing until the minimum point. And after that, after the minimum point, the graph increasing again. All right, so you can see that this whole graph consists of three parts. First part is increasing, second part decreasing, then the part is increasing again. So we are using the graph to help us. All right, and after that, you already know that the value here, this is negative one, and this value x is three. Therefore, to write out the answer, okay, the value of x, which the function has a decreasing function, what is the answer? So for part number three, you just need to write out the solution very easily, which is from negative one until three. So for this answer, you are having a decreasing function during this uh, for this range. Up. All right, so you don't need to go and write out the steps and then draw the number line and so on. You can share where we refer to the graph. It is very useful. Okay, all right, so this is how we actually do the maximum or minimum point, uh, the question related to maximum or minimum point. So generally, when you look at either maximum or minimum point, you always let dy is equals to zero. So this is the main idea that you need to know. All right, dy dx equals to zero means that you are trying to find out stationary point or either maximum or minimum point. Okay. All right, so this example haven't uh, involved the question ask us to decide whether it's maximum or minimum because they already give you the graph. All right, so we can continue to next example and see what they want. All right, so we have a look for example 12. Okay, so for example 12, you're having this curve. Okay, so for first part, they want you to write down the expression for dy, dx, and also the second derivative. All right, so um, for me, I'm not going to discuss this in detail with you. I will just straight away write out the final answer for you. All right, so the dy, dx, uh, you should try out on your own, and you should be able to get uh, 2x minus 2 over x squared as the answer. And then after that, d squared y, dx squared you should get 2 plus 4 over x power 3. Okay, so these are the answers for part number 1. So you just go ahead and copy yourself for part 1. Alright, okay. Then now we want to continue to part number 2. Okay, so for part number 2, they want to find the coordinates of stationary point. Okay, on the curve and determine its nature. Alright, so when you look at the keyword stationary point, first thing come to your mind is you need to let dy dx equals to zero. So let dy dx, okay, this is my dy, dy dx. Huh? You already get it from the first part just now. Alright, so I will let it equals to zero. And I will want to find out the value of x. I think I make a careless mistake here, right? So this should be a square. All right, so if you try to solve for the x, you have x power 3, which is equals to 1, and therefore you get x equals to 1. All right? Okay, so once I know that x equals to 1 already, I try to find out the value of y. Okay, so what's the value of y here? So y is equals to substitute uh, x equals to 1 into the original equation. I think you should get a 3. Okay, all right. So this is my stationary point, 1 and 3. 
but now I want to know whether it's a maximum or minimum. All right, so if follow what you have learned before, we are applying method number two, right, in our notes. Huh? All right, so if let's say you're applying the method that you learned before, then the step will be very easy. You are looking for d square y dx squared. Okay, so you already have the differentiation just now, and you want to substitute into your equation. So 4 divided by 1 power 3. Okay, so when you put in the value, you'll get a 6. Uh, and then usually you compare it with the value, right, 0. So it is more than 0. It is a positive value. Therefore, you can straight away make a conclusion that 1, 3 is a maximum. Okay, so this is what you have for secondary school method. Uh, you learned this before. Okay, of course, this is still applicable for AS level syllabus. No worry about it. Okay, just that when you go to A2, this method will become very tedious if you want to apply it. Uh, you will understand it when you go to A2. Uh. Alright, so for now, if you still prefer this one, just go ahead. But I still want you to learn out method number one. Okay, so now, let's discuss method number one now. Alright, so here end the case, uh, end case, method number two. So now, we go for method number one. Alright, okay, so after just now, uh, from, from where we stopped just now is, okay, assume that you already get x equals to 1 and also y equals to 3 already, then now you want to decide whether it's maximum or minimum. Okay, so what you need to do is like, you need to use a table. For me, I'm using a table uh, in method number 1. So the table always looks like this one. Uh, okay, draw this table out. Okay, so I will label it as dy dx here. And then I'm having x equals to 1. x smaller than 1 and also x greater than 1. Okay, so the value 1 here, x equals to 1, is actually the value that you get in the first part just now. When you solve dy dx equals to 0. Okay, so you follow. If I say here you get x equals to 2, then in this part you put x equals to 2. If I say here you get x equals to negative 5, then here you just put in x equals to negative 5. Okay, right, then uh, for x equals to 1, the dy dx is equals to 0, right? because just now you let dy dx equals to 0, then you get x equals to 1. That means when x equals to 1, dy dx is equals to 0. This is a value for dy dx. That's why I put dy dx here, right? So this is a value for dy dx. Yeah, all right, then now you want to, okay, so for this table when you set up, uh, when you're having x equals to negative 1 here, right? So before it, it will be x smaller than 1, and after it, you will write x greater than 1. Right? So that's why I say, if I say you're having x equals to 2, then this one you put x smaller than 2, and this one you put x greater than 2. So this is how we set up our, our table. Okay, so once you're ready, then I want to look at this part now. To get the answer for this part, right, I want to focus on whether this value is it maximum or minimum. Okay, how can I know that is it maximum or minimum? Very easy. For this one, we are talking about x smaller than 1, right? You use a number very close to 1 but smaller than 1. So let's say for me, usually I will use 0 0.9. Okay, it has to be very close to the 1. All right, and then smaller than one. So students say, why can I use zero? Why can I use negative one? Okay, that point, those points are too far away. So you might actually miss out another possible stationary point. All right, so no matter how, if you want it to be safe, you just use a number very close to one and smaller than one. So for me, I'm using x equals to 0 0.9 here. Okay, so what you need to do is you put the 0 0.9 Substitute it into your dy dx. So you're having 2 multiplied with 0 0.9 minus 2 over 0 0.9 squared. Just press calculator, no need to buy the step or whatsoever. Just need to uh, into the uh, press calculator and try to get the answer. 
Okay, so what you need to do is like you need to fill in the no need to print the value, but I just want you to see whether is it maximum or minimum. Oh, sorry, positive or negative. Right, so again, you use x equals to 0 0.9, sum it into the dy dx, and tell me what is the sign for dy dx. Is it positive value or negative value? Okay, so I believe that you should get a positive value. Okay, sorry, you should get a negative value. Okay, so from here, I think I realized I make a wrong conclusion here, right? This one shouldn't be a maximum. Huh? This one should be a minimum. Oh, I'm so sorry for that. Careless mistake. Okay, so if let's say this minimum, okay, so that means uh, if you substitute the zero point into the dy dx, you actually should get the negative value for your dy dx. Okay, the value is not important. I just want to go to sign only. All right, after that, if you continue, then for x greater than one, I will suggest you, you to use a number more than one, but very close to one. So for me, I will use 1.1. 1 .1. So again, substitute 1.1 into the dy dx. And if you are, if I'm not mistaken, you should get a positive value. All right? Okay, so when dy dx is negative, means that your gradient of your equation of tangent or your tangent look like this. Gradient negative muscle, your tangent line will look like this. When dy dx equals to zero, your tangent line look like this. Horizontal line. And then when you're having a positive gradient for tangent, then your tangent will look something that is going up. All right, so if you try to connect these two points together, huh, you see that actually you're having a minimum point. You can see that or not? All right, okay, so you can make the conclusion also, one three is a minimum point. All right, so this is what we have up for using method number one. You need to draw a table form and then you figure out the sign of the dy dx before and after the stationary form. And again, the value that you use must be very close to the original answer. If it is one, then please make sure that you choose a number very close to one. All right? Okay, so for this part, you're having 0 0.9 and 1.1. 1 .1. Okay, then after that, after you sort out the sign for dy dx already, then you simply draw a graph. You can have a look very clearly. So you're having a minimum point here. That x equals to 1. All right, so this is what we have for our method number 1. You need to draw a table. All right, so sometimes it can be very tedious when you're having more than one stationary point. For this case, you're having only one value of x. For some example, if let's say you're having two values of x, then you need to draw two separate tables. And make two different conclusions for two different points. Understand what I'm All right. Okay. So I understand this might be a bit new to you, but again, just make sure that you learn it up by practicing uh, all the other passive question, right? If can, uh, you try to apply this so that you get familiar with this. All right. You will use it very often in A2 level. It will be very, very useful in A2. All right. Okay. Then if you have no problem, then we can proceed to the next example, example 13. Okay, so for example 13, they are asking you to find the coordinates of any stationary point of this curve. So again, this question, they only want you to find the stationary point. You no need to decide whether is it positive or is it maximum or minimum. So you just find out the stationary point. It will be very simple. Okay, so if let's say um, you know how to do it, please pause the video first. Complete this solution, then after that only you check your answer with this video, right? Okay, so we are having y equals to 4x power 3 minus x power 4. Then first you need to do the differentiation. Right, so after you do this differentiation, you let dy dx equals to 0. Okay, so again, usually I will tell students, please remember, don't cancel out any x. You can factorize it, but you cannot cancel them off because you will cancel off one answer. 
All right, so you cannot cancel off the 4 and x squared. You have to factorize it out only. All right, so you're having 4x squared and 3 minus x equals to 0. Then you should have 4x squared equals to 0. And then 3 minus x equals to 0. All right, and then 0 is equals to x equals to 0 here and x equals to 3. So you're having two stationary points here. Both are stationary points. Can you imagine or not, if let's say just now you cancel off the x squared, then you lost one answer, you only have one answer here. But actually for this question, should have two answers for stationary point, 0 and also 3. Okay, so when x equals to 0, find out the value of y. And also when x equals to 3, find out the value of y. Okay, so for this one, you should get 1 to 27. All right, so your stationary point is what? Stationary point is equal to 0 and 0 and 327. So we'll just stop here for the stationary point. Okay, because the question didn't ask us to determine whether is it maximum or or what. Okay, so we just stop here for this question. All right. So for your own in a uh, phone own interest, like if let's say you want to figure out and see whether is it maximum or minimum point, maybe you can try to find out yourself by using the method number one that you learned just now. Okay. So if let's say you apply the method correctly just now, uh, this point is actually the point of inflection. I will show you the steps. Uh, you can just go ahead and try it out. Okay, you should get the conclusion that this point is point of inflection and then this one should be a maximum point. You can practice and see whether you can get the answer correctly or not. But for this question itself in exam, no need to show them whether it's a point of inflection or maximum point because they didn't ask for it. Okay, huh? so this is what you have for the maximum and also the minimum point questions. Alright, there are quite a lot of uh, questions from past year from this part. Alright, so if you want, you can actually try 10 more questions from here, from the past. Alright, so that's all for the video of today. Then for the next video, we are going to discuss how to solve uh, maximum and minimum problems. Uh, all these are maximum and minimum points for today's video. So next video will be about the maximum or minimum problems, more on the more application side. Uh, but what's the maximum volume, uh, maximum length, uh, and so on. Okay, so that's all for today.